Hello, Jaguars. I am Zamar Tompkins, host of Jaguar Sports Talk Nation. And on this episode, we've got a very exciting conversation with the head coach behind women's soccer, head coach Ante Chopin. He's here to tell us all about their impressive season. Coach, thank you for joining us today. We really appreciate your presence. Thank you, Zamar. Thank you for having me. All right. Got a lot of questions for you, so let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, this has been your third season here as the coach of women's soccer. Right. Tell us about uh, how your ladies have been able to improve from year one all the way up until year three. Lots of hard work. Um, the quality of play on the field has been has improved, obviously, from the first year till now. Uh, we've added a lot of quality players over the last couple of years. Um, you know, rookie of the year in Avery Damjanovic uh, in the spring of 21, because we always have to differentiate because there was two seasons in one year. Uh, and then last year, you know, you had Daisy Bonilla uh, that came in and finished second in voting for Rookie of the Year in the conference. Um, you know, we had an impressive core of girls coming in last year with Anissa Pazmino, who is one of the leading scorers on the team, Rebecca Mercado, who, you know, uh, contributed a number of minutes in a, in a defensive position. Uh, then you had Eileen Gallardo, Naomi Gallardo, the two sisters that came in and did really well. Um, you know, Brianna Bembenek, who is a, uh, a graduate uh, coming in, graduate student coming in, working on her teaching degree or her, te her teaching certificates, excuse me. So, you know, we had a lot of girls come in and they contributed mightily. And, uh, you know, obviously for us to go from one win to three wins to now six wins last year, um, you know, I'd like to do it to 12 wins coming up now for the, <laughs> for the season coming up. But, um, you know, it was really good. And then uh, you know, obviously we built off of what we, what we did in the spring of 21 in the fall of 21 and uh, you know it led to the it led to the three extra wins and we were in a lot of other games we had a number of overtime games St. Francis, uh, Cardinal Stritch, uh, Olivet where you know one unlucky bounce cost us three points or at least one point in a tie so but uh, those are the games we're looking to to get and now in the fall of 22 yeah. All right and we talked a little bit about uh, how we performed last season uh, at home we broke even with a record of three and three Tell me how you're looking to improve upon that record this coming up season. Uh, the home, you know, our, our, our field and Crown Point there that we're using, the Crown Point Sportsplex, it's, uh, it's become a pretty tough place to play. Um, and again, you know, we were in a couple games there too that, I, you know, I thought we should have won. Um, but unfortunately, again, you know, the ball bounces one way and, you know, you're maybe unlucky or whatever. But, um, you know, there's, there's a lot to improve there in the home stretch, if you want to say. We have a we have number of home games before the, pre, uh, before the conference season starts. So we're hoping to have a better home record now uh, coming into the, you know, at the end of the fall 2022 season. Um, and to be quite honest, we're hoping to host a playoff game too there. So um, we're hoping to, you know, uh, follow in the footsteps of Coach Matt and the men's team, uh, getting into that, you know, getting into the national tournament like they did last year. Um, and with the class that we got coming in for 2022, um, it's a, it could be a reality. And uh, obviously there's a lot of work to be done between now and then, but, uh, you know, hopefully that home slate turning in, uh, turning the sportsplex into, you know, that fortress, you know, um, would be a great thing. And I think it would help us a ton as far as getting, uh, you know, the, that better record that we need to get in finally into the CCAC, CCAC playoffs and then, you know, a possible national berth too. All right. You mentioned uh, CCAC, which is the conference that we play in. Very tough conference. Uh, even so, the Jaguars were still able to uh, have a record of five and eight in the CCAC. Uh, talk to me about how we can improve that record moving forward. Sometimes you need a little luck. And, uh, you know, that was uh, what was stopping us from, you know, quite possibly being, you know, at a 500 mark, um, you know, or even being, you know, in that top four, you know, with a the, with the winning margin. So, again, there was games that, you know, against nationally ranked teams like Cardinal Stritch and, you know, you lose one nothing on a, on a penalty. And then there was the game against Olivet where, you, you know, you lose on a, on an overtime goal and St. Francis, the same thing, an overtime goal where, you know, you're a match so evenly with these teams, um, but, you know, one piece of luck for the other team turned the game or whatever it was, you know. Um, the one thing I was proudest of is that, you know, in the two years before that, those were games that, you know, we would already be losing, you know, three, four, nothing or something like that because we would be, you know, mentally maybe not all there. But this year with the mental toughness, you know, that, that the girls really showed and, uh, with the recruiting class that came in with that, you know, winning mentality from the club teams that they played on and the high school teams that they played on, I think that added to the mix. And, you know, I think that, you know, when you add that and with the girls that are coming in now, the couple D1 transfers that we have and uh, the couple internationals that are also coming in, you know, it's going to be a, a whole different, you know, it's going to be a whole different kind of environment now coming in the fall. Um, so, you know, if we can do that 
if we can add that experience to the talent and the mental toughness we have now, I think you're looking at a team that could, like I said, quite possibly challenge for top spot in the CCAC, but definitely a playoff spot and you know, possibly a, a national berth getting through the playoffs. I see it happening very soon for your team. Uh, speaking of uh, challenges, and you've already uh, mentioned this quite a bit, uh, we've uh, recently had the COVID-19 spring season, and then we had to come back and have the fall season all happen in the same year. Right. Talk to me about uh, the, the challenge that was for your program. I'll tell you what, um, you know, when the CCAC said that we were moving to the spring of 2021 instead of playing in the fall of 2020, um, I actually think it helped us. I actually think it helped us because it helped the girls get to know each other. It helped the girls get to really, you know, uh, get that sort of, you know, team cohesion and that, you know, that kind of uh, synergy that we needed. And it showed on the field. Again, we proved to people, you know, a second year program, um, you know, where the year before, 115 and one, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're three and seven, where again, we had games where we were right there, you know, Cardinal Stritch, a couple of the other games in the spring. And then, you know, you saw the improvement in the fall. You know, and, and again, fall, you know, spring 2021 was a challenge, you know, getting out to, you know, making sure the masks were on, making sure that we were getting, you know, uh, you know, our temperature tested and everything like that every day. But the girls were resilient and, you know, it just proved that, you know, they wanted to get through it. They wanted to play. Um, you know, thankfully, we had no COVID cases, so it was good for us. You know, it, 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 it led to, you know, having the girls together for, for the entire season and, and it really helped them, you know, gel together. Um, and then, you know, when it came to, came to the fall, adding the talent that we did, those girls were already battle tested from the spring. The girls that came in also had to go through it for high school, you know, for many of them from Indiana and Illinois and everything like that. And a couple of them from Florida where they played and, you know, got through the whole COVID, you know, uh, situation with, you know, with no hitch. So it was good, you know, and then again, the fall, good, did what we needed to do to get through it. The girls all stayed healthy. I think we only had one COVID case. So, you know, we, we did what was necessary and, you know, took the necessary steps to make sure that we stayed as healthy as possible. And again, it showed on the field because we were good, we were getting better. And, you know, there was, you know, there were times where we were playing with teams that were ranked top 20, top 10 in the country, and we were keeping up with them. So there were a couple of games where, <laughs> you know, you just say, okay, it didn't go our way today and everything. But there were, in, you know, there were many, many times in the fall where you could see that the future of the program was coming into, into full view. And I can't wait for the fall of 2022 with that in mind. All right. And thank you for that, Coach. Uh, we're going to take a quick break right now. But when we come back, we'll still be talking with uh, Head Coach Chope. But we'll be shifting our focus to our uh, current seniors and next year's play. So don't go far. The Athletic and Recreation Center is now reopened. After being closed due to COVID precautions, the center is now available to the public. There are free weights, exercise machines, and cardiovascular equipment all located in the A building of Governor State. These are all free benefits for actively registered Governor State University students. Just use My One Card to get in. The public can also join for a fee. For more information, please visit govst.edu slash recfit. Welcome back, Jaguars. We're still here with head coach Ante Chope, and we're still talking Jaguar soccer. Coach, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some of the seniors on this current roster. Uh, first up, let's talk about Ursula Bravo. Uh, she, she's had a heck of a season last year. Tell me, how was she able to uh, work hard enough to be a CCAC Defensive Player of the Week? Let me tell you something. She should have been first team all defensive uh, for a CCAC. She should have been first team all conference. She was that good. She was, uh, she was our pillar in the back. Um, just, I mean, she came in as a forward from Morton College a couple years back, and uh, she's turned into what I think, into who I think is one of the most dominant center backs in the entire league. Um, without her back there, um, you know, she has a, a, a good deal of defensive help and did this year with Eileen, Naomi, Melissa, and, you know, a couple of the other girls, Kara. Um, but she's the, the true leader back there. She's been fantastic, and she's, and that's down to her training as hard as she does you know, watching the film I send her and everything like that. So I'm super proud of where she's come from. And it's just, again, I think she's coming back for next year as well. So, you know, I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun having her back. And I think with the, with the talent helping her now, I think she'll be able to be, you know, that she'll have that spotlight on her and she should be able to get on the, at least a second team all conference, but if not first, that's, that's how, that's how much I respect her. Great, great. 
And let's uh, talk about Brianna uh, Bembenek. She led the GSU Jaguars in shooting percentage this year. We know what the numbers say, but tell me, how do you feel about how she performed this year? Well, I'll tell you what. She came. She had an injury early on. Uh, she had a quad injury. Um, she wasn't. She really didn't come into full form until the end of the year, and it showed. I mean, she scored the two goals against Trinity International last game. She was dangerous against Olivet. She was dangerous against a number of the other teams. Great leader, uh, senior leadership. You know, it was her fifth year uh, coming that COVID year that she got extra. Um, you know, she scored 41 goals at the school that she was at before in four years uh, at York down in Nebraska. Um, you know, good school, great player. And it's funny how she was in our backyard here in, you know, uh, the Frankfurt area. And she gave me a call. She was like, hey, coach, I'd love to come play. By all means, come and play. I wish we had her for the full season. Had she been fully healthy, I think she would even, I think she would have gotten into double digit goals. And I think she would have been another one that could have been, you know, a second team all conference or a first team all conference performer. We'll miss her for next year for sure. All right. And uh, let's talk about uh, Melissa Guerrero. She made the all CCAC academic team. Right. Tell me how uh, important that is and how that makes you feel as a coach to have a player that can bring it in the classroom as well as bringing it on the field. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, our girls have been uh, top of the top of the chain, if you want to talk, uh, t you know, if you want to call it in the athletic department for GPA for, I think, the last three years. I think we've had a cumulative of about three, four, three, five. And, you know, Melissa's one of those, you know, uh, those performers in the classroom as well. She was fantastic for us in the spring of 2021. A couple of injuries led her to not maybe contributing so much in the fall. But in the spring of 21, uh, with, with Ursula in the back, she was great. Um, but again, classroom-wise, she's fantastic. Just one of those girls that came in, had something to prove, both on the field and off. And she's done super well with, uh, you know, with everything as far as that goes. Um, you know, and, and again, we're looking to get her back full health so that she could be you know, Ursula's uh, you know, defensive partnership back there you know, that, would, that helped us do as well as we did in the spring of 21. I think with her healthy in the fall of 20, in the fall of 21, we would have been even that much better. But you know, we're looking forward to getting her back in the field fully healthy, and I don't have to worry about her in the classroom. So it's a, it's a load off the line, right? I would, I would imagine that's a great feeling to not have to worry about them in the classroom. That it is. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk about next season. Uh, we're currently in the off season, and you've been telling me since you got here that the grind never stops. That's right. uh, tell me, uh, how, what's the plan for making sure that our ladies are ready for next season as far as like the cohesiveness and all the, the work that goes in uh, before we step on the field? Well, spring we'll have our workout sessions. Uh, we'll be getting out. Uh, I want the girls to concentrate on academics first for the first portion of the year. And then after spring break, we'll be getting into the weight room. Uh, we'll be getting out on the field again when hopefully there's no snow on the ground. Um, you know, and then we'll be really working towards, you know, our goals for the fall. Um, I know many of the girls will be playing on, uh, you know, pretty competitive teams over the summer. Um, we'll have our summer program as well, you know, where there'll be captain's practices and all that stuff. And they'll be getting together and making sure that they keep themselves fit and ready to go. Um, you know, obviously I want them working on their grades right now, making sure that they get that, you know, the academic portion out of the way for the first half of the second semester. But, you know, once we do get together at that later portion of March, then it's, you know, full speed ahead. And uh, we prepare for 2022 with a pretty, you know, intense fitness regimen, uh, technical work with the ball, you know, making sure that we have, you know, a, a list of goals that we have for ourselves for, for the fall of 2022. And, you know, uh, you know, get yourself better Mondays where we talk about, you know, how we need what, what our goals are for the week, what our goals are for the month and everything like that. So a lot of work ahead. But again, it's the fun part of it as, as far as a coach, go, you know, as far as being the head coach and, and seeing the girls mature and develop into even better players and even better people. It's awesome. All right. Thank you, Coach, for joining us today. Appreciate thank having you on the show. Thank you for pronouncing my name right, my man. As always, it's, uh, it, it, it warms the heart of this Croatian coach. Thank you very much. I do what I can. <laughs> you, you do well, my man. You do All right. Well. All right. And there you have it straight from head coach Ante Chope himself. Uh, to stay up to date with all sports stats and schedules for GSU Jaguars, make sure you visit gsujaguars.com. Thanks for watching Sports Talk Nation. I am Zamar Tompkins. See you next time.